What up, everybody? I'm Dave Miranda, and this is episode 51 of Just Give Me Five. I hope you guys are doing great. Continue to be amazing. We got a really awesome show set up for you today. But if you guys caught episode 50, that's right, I said episode 50, that's half of 100, you might have seen that we uh, had a little celebratory episode, you know, for actually gaining 50 episodes. And you got to remember, man, that's just, this is 50 weeks. Like, we have been dropping one episode a week since we started in December, which reminds me our one-year anniversary is coming up as well. Um, it's just been crazy, man. It's been an awesome, you know, awesome ride. We were able to highlight, you know, some of our best episodes. We couldn't get all of them. I think all of them are amazing. But, you know, maybe on episode 100, we'll be able to kind of get some of the ones that we missed. But just want to say thank you to everybody that's been rocking with us from the jump. And even the new, you know, the newcomers, you know, everybody that's been, you know, supporting um, the movement. Um, it's just, it's been really awesome, you know, and it feels like things are slowly starting to kind of pay off. You know, we're just, we're just growing, continue to grow, grow and grow. And it's just, it's awesome to have, you know, that support from you. And, uh, you know, let's just keep this moving, man. You know, it's been, it's been a nice ride. So let's just keep this moving. All right. But today's guest has been a well-known figure in the Arizona scene for over two decades now. His Hood Famous single back in the day got him both local and national buzz. I mean, this guy had MTV in Maryvale for crying out loud. That alone is legendary. <laughs> he had write-ups in Double XL Magazine and numerous others. We're also gonna talk about his Million Dollar Teacher program and basically everything after music. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you, Atlas. Yo, this is Lloyd Hopkins, also known as Atlas. And all I'm saying is just give me five. Man, so the first time, if, and, if I, and, I, and if I can really go back a little bit, man, when I was first inspired to be an MC, I was probably like, eight, nine years old when Criss Cross came out. Okay. And, and what was wild about it is that I saw some kids that looked like me on TV, being cool, backwards clothes. Nice. So that's what, that's what first inspired me to be an entertainer. Like right. where I really caught the bug and said, I want to be in the game somehow. Yeah. So I started riding a little bit. I was living in Texas at the time. So I was listening to Ghetto Boys oh, yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. So I just started getting into the culture. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really see myself taking it seriously at that point. It wasn't until high school, man. And what I'll say is it was, it was Method Man. Wu-Tang Clan and Method Man, his album to Cal. Yeah. That's when I really looked at, like, no, I want to do what he's doing. His yeah. delivery, Absolutely. when he had the hair out, yeah, half man. braided, half yeah, out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, man, I want to do what he's doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what really motivated me, inspired me to pursue it as a career. Yeah, man, so that was a, that was a process. So at that point, this, is, this was at, like, 2000 six I want to say um, I got a little buzz going on in the city I got hood famous out yeah, um, I put out the album King of AZ and, and we're running these streets at that time right and MTV came to town and they were asking radio personalities and all that like who's popping in the city right. like who's hot out here because we we're, we're trying to get a coach for this show we want to feature them on MTV yeah. so I they they so they held an audition a casting call at some studio in like Tempe I believe okay. and so the who's who were rappers were in there I don't want to name nobody's name <laughs> I don't want to put nobody on blast who didn't get selected packed. but it was packed <laughs> and there was a bunch of local rappers in there a bunch of guys on the come up at different levels and they all and we all came in and, um, and they did a, a screen test with us. So they had cameras set up like this and they came in and just had us rap, recite some lines and really just try to get a sense of our personality. And I remember walking out of there and I looked at everybody and I was like, man, we got this shit. I was like, I'm just, I just felt it, you know, yeah. from the from the from the energy, from the casting directors and everybody. I just felt right. like. Like, no, we got this. Everybody, everybody can go home. It's in the bag. In the bag. <laughs> and, and so we left 
And then I want to say like a couple days later, MTV called and said, yo, you want to be on MTV Made? We need a rap coach and gave us the job, man. And then I went to Sedona and started teaching this girl how to rap and the rest is history, man. Um, a cool moment from the MTV Made. You know what, to be honest with you, so we were helping, the, the girl's name was Genevieve. And we were helping Genevieve prepare for her high school pep rally. That was the whole, oh, nice. the whole thing. So I wanted to teach her how to be a performer. I had my man Cap MC with me to be her hype man. And we wanted her to look and feel like an MC. Right, right. The moment that really stuck out to me was when I was helping her learn how to write a rap. Like I was helping her learn how to, you know, don't like this isn't just about rhyming words together. You want to tell an authentic story about your life. So let's talk about what's real about you. And, and, and what I loved about that is that that's the misconception that people always have about rap music. They, they, when, they, when they downplay it as an art form and think anybody can just do, get on a mic and do it. Yeah. But to be, a, to be able to tell a story and rhyme at the same time, yeah. say something meaningful and impactful, like that's a skill, that's a talent. Not everybody can just do that. Yeah. And so I sat her down and we had a, a, a writing bars one-on-one session. I remember we were sitting at a picnic table outside and, and I was just, and we were talking about her life. And then I was helping her construct that into a song. And at the end of it, she had this really personal piece of work that meant something to her, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so we helped her tell her story in a rhyming fashion, man. And it was, it was more, that's what I love about the art form though. That's what I love about hip hop, man. That's what I love about the culture. Yeah, so the Rockets deal came. Um, so Rockets was doing a thing called the Rockets 50. And now this is after I put out King of AZ. I put out Hunger and Starvation. Um, MTV made appearances. I was in Double XL magazine. I was in The Source magazine. Rockets kind of came out the same way, looking for the hottest MCs yeah. in each city. So they wanted to pick, what they really wanted to do was pick 50 MCs from across the nation. So yeah. one from Arizona, one from Alaska, MCs from everywhere. And so we had to submit music. We had to send it in. And I had did the demo run where I was, where, when I was up in all the labels, but I decided to go independent and do everything myself. Yeah. And so the fact that they were offering independent deals where we still retained ownership, they didn't keep the music for longer than the lifespan of one year. And after this, you get the project back. Um, um, and, and being able to repain, retain my independence. And we went digital before going digital was a thing. Now streaming is everything. Right. Rockets 50 was pre, was really like one of the early streaming type of deals. You know what I'm saying? So it was really kind of a legendary move, man. But we, we submitted music. We went out and met with Jared and, and, the, and the owners in New York City, and, um, and we just vibed, man. And, 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 and the structure of the deal really worked for me and where I was at in my life and really trying to be about ownership and that independent life. So we, so we inked the deal, man, and went, went streaming before streaming was streaming. Right, yeah. right. That was when Slop was running it out. Yeah, there. man. So, and so also, that's, yeah, man, this is good you bring that up. Yeah. So, um, Man, I forget. I completely forgot about that. So, yeah. so what? Also, Slop was the A and R for Rockets, right. and um, and so Slop came out looking for talent. You know, yeah. like looking for, and that was our gateway right. to really get with Rockets. So Slop came out looking for talent, and at that time we were doing the Music Fusion Fest at Alice Cooper's Town downtown. So Rock, so so Slop came into town, and we wanted to show him a good time, man. So we had the whole crew around him, took him out partying, and really tried to show him what Arizona was like. Right. And we just hit it off, man. And um, uh, we put together this big festival yeah. with all kind of acts. It was rock groups, rap groups, um, poets, graffiti artists, right. and he saw how we were really connecting the city. Like we were bringing together. Like we were bringing together everybody, and we had really, we really had a pulse on on Phoenix, man, and yeah. and that really struck him. He's like, "This is a guy. This is the type of artist we want in the Rockets 50." And and Slop is really the one that made all that happen, man. Straight up, straight up. I'm glad you reminded me of that, man. Shout out to Slop Funk Dust. Yes, sir. 
I haven't talked to that brother in a while, man, but Slop is, is owed much kudos, man. He did, a, he did a lot out here, a lot for artists out here, man. Yeah, straight up. You know, about the time I was turning 30, man, it was um, the, the, the amount of money I was making in the game wasn't necessarily justifying the headache that comes with the game. All the distractions, all the just headaches, man. And, um, and, and what I really realized about myself is that as passionate as I am about music, I'm more passionate about trying to impact people's lives. Yeah. And I'm really passionate about trying to change the experience of black and brown kids right. and making sure they have every opportunity to be what they want in this life. Um, and so once I, once that, that, that realization came to me, I realized that, um, that I wanted to do more. And, and I was really doing music as a conduit to try to impact people, right? To try to impact lives. But I realized that you don't have to be an artist to do that. So um, a lot of my work away from music all revolved around the community, nonprofit work, working with kids, working with youth, um, working with schools. So I went back to school in, in 2013 to get my degree in nonprofit leadership and management. And the beautiful thing about it, I was able to use my time in school uh, because I was a non-traditional student, so I wasn't some 21-year-old kid. So I was able to be in there much more focused um, and, and not worry about the distractions that normally come with being in college. So I, so I turned all of my classes, because I kind of went back kicking and screaming, man. Like, um, it wasn't, it, I, I didn't want to have to sit in class to get the degree. Yeah. And I tried everything in my power to get out of it, but ASU was like, nope, you got to pay for these classes, you got to sit in this class, and that's just that. Right. So once I got over that, I figured out how to make the time meaningful because then all of my classes and all my professors became consultants. And I decided to use my time in school to figure out how to launch my own nonprofit organization. Because I'm always an entrepreneur, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm really a social entrepreneur. So I spent four years building the business plan for Million Dollar Teacher Project. So, I, and, um, so every class project became a way for me to explore how to really launch my own program. And so I graduated. Uh, May, May 2016, and I officially launched Million Dollar Teacher Project uh, October 2016. Nice. So five years later, man, we've now impacted thousands of teachers across this state. The program is all about teacher retention and recruitment. Because what I really recognize is that in the work of improving schools and impacting kids, yeah. There's a lot of programs that focus on the kids. There's a lot of programs that focus on technology and buildings, but not a lot of programs that focus on the teachers themselves. And they're actually the most important part. Like if we wanna make sure kids are getting a quality education that starts with that educator, it starts with that teacher. When we're all students, our teachers are our universe, man. Teachers are teaching us how to interpret the world, how to socialize, um, and helping us find ourselves. And so I wanted to make it where teaching in marginalized communities were the destination. So I wanted to make it where it was attractive for the best and brightest teachers to want to go into those communities and really bring their ta time, talent, and treasures to those kids. And that's what motivated me to launch Million Dollar Teacher Project. And so 2016, we launched. We, uh, we're all about teacher retention and recruitment. We're working with dozens of schools in the Valley, impacting thousands of kids a year, all through work with teachers. We recently partnered with the Department of Education and got a huge investment in our work that's enabled us to, uh, to expand statewide. So it's, it's, been, um, it's been a labor of love, man. I get, I get to wake up every day doing something that I believe in, Absolutely. something that I care about, and something that I really feel like is um, gonna empower so many people because education is the great equalizer right. you know like right. like it like i feel like schools and proper education can fix so many of society's ills all in our classrooms all the stuff we've seen in the past couple years right. can be addressed through education you know and so i feel like i'm doing my part to try to create a better existence and 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 better outcomes for kids that look like me right. and 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 
and for the community in general, man. So it's been, it's been amazing, an amazing journey. You know what, I wanna, I wanna give a shout out to you because I think the platform you're creating and the way that you're telling our stories is a selfless act. Because this camera could just be focused on you. You know, you're a contributor out here to this scene. And, and the fact that you felt that my journey and my story was worthy enough for this platform, man, I'm, I'm honored. You know, like I'm, I'm truly honored. It means a lot because I love this city. Like I love, if you look at my first album, King of AZ, everything, my whole, my whole journey has been about my love for Arizona, my love for Maryville. That neighborhood raised me, man. Like it turned me into the man I am. For bet, all the good and bad that happened when I was coming up as a kid, it turned me into who I am. And it's a very special place and I love it. And, 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 and so to be able to um, talk about that, to share that, but then also be a part of helping us expand the narrative, Absolutely. us to change our perspective of how we can contribute to the culture. Yeah. We don't always gotta be in front of the microphone. We can be behind that camera. Right. We can launch nonprofit organizations. We can do all these things. And this is all still very hip hop, man, like all from the culture. Right. And so it's, um, so I'm just, I'm just glad and honored that I've had an opportunity to contribute in some small shape, form or fashion. And I look forward to contributing even greater things because the story ain't over yet. So let me start off by shouting out my wife, Kashana. Without her, I wouldn't be able to do half of the things that I've done. My kid, Young Atlas, who's, who's out here paving his own way right now. My daughter, Starry. Uh, my team at Million Dollar Teacher Project, from the board to, to the staff that we have, uh, the folks at the Social Television Network um, um, that are enabling me to tell, to, to tell stories in my own way about people contributing to the community. Um, it's, it's really a blessing, man, to get up every day and be able to do, do what you love, you know? It's really a blessing. So I appreciate your time today, Mr. Miranda, man. This, is, this has been amazing. Um, thank you for highlighting the stories of people like myself and other folks. And all I can say is, man, just, just give me five. Thank you for giving me five. And there you have it. Man, nothing but love and respect to my brother Atlas. You know what I'm saying? I know Atlas for many years. He's always been a heavy hitter in the scene. And it was just really nice to have him on the show, telling his story, you know, and everything after music, you know, and everything he has going on now, so many accomplishments, you know, and just such a humble human being, man. It was, it was just, it was truly a treat to have him on the show with us today. So make sure you guys are following him on social media. And shout out to my brother, Jimmy Nelson on the camera. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Share, share, share. <laughs> All right. Well, this was another one for the book, so I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, until next time, stay tuned, stay blessed, stay healthy, and just give me five, y'all.